Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello, everybody. It's uh, Kieran aka the Laird here. Um, on this cold but sunny day, as you can see from the reflections on the book here. And uh, I have a book review for you, of course. And uh, as you can see, it's Better Late Than Never, uh, pixel art book by Andy Green. And those of you who watched my video last week uh, on the 8-bit annual, uh, go back and watch that if you didn't watch it, because it's, it's a rather spiffing book that I help contribute to. You remember that I mentioned Andy Green in his book, um, in that very review because I said I was waiting for it to turn up and it has turned up now so it is now here for review I thought this book was going to be the one that came last week so uh, yes uh, let's have a look at this wonderful thing so best late than ever Andy Green pixel art book uh, by Richard Langford and Andy Green with contributions by my good friend Sean McClure and John Davis and just to give actually a little bit of background um, to this book is you you might know Andy Green because he's been posting around on uh, social media Twitter and Facebook for a long time with his uh, recreations of spectrum loading screens or not always re not just recreations some games didn't even have them at all so he made ones for games that didn't have them really made ones for uh, spectrum games that had really crap loading screens and that was kind of the origins of this book because after a while people were saying these are really nice you should put them in a book and he started to take that seriously and went, um, well, who would be interested in the book? Lots of people went, yeah. And uh, he spoke to me because he knows that I do books myself um, for a bit of advice. Uh, he showed me a kind of demo, uh, demo, a kind of preview kind of PDF thing that he'd put together as well, um, eventually. And uh, he said, what do you think of this? Do you think people would buy it? And I was like, definitely. It looks absolutely awesome. Um, this is something you so need to do. He was quite worried about um, the legal aspects of it because of obviously him using other people's art and stuff like that. But I um, helped him a lot with with um, with what he he could and couldn't do and what to say and what copyright messages and all stuff like that to put in. And eventually, he originally said he might do a small run of print books just for the you know the people he thought who might be interested. I obviously told. I'd already told him that I thought a lot of people would be interested. It turns out lots of people were interested, and he decided to go ahead and make a full-blown book. So at that point, I put him on to my publisher, um, Andrews UK, who did the honours and helped him put this print book together. So yes, it's, it's done by the same people who do my own books. And so with that, let's have a little look at it, because it's lovely. Um, it's a hardback, as you can see. Uh, there's the back with a spectrum on it as well and a little bit about Andy himself. Um, AG Books, same people that do mine, and it is £32.99. Um, which isn't the cheapest, but um, obviously it's a big full-colour hardback book and also all of the profits to this book are going to charity. That is something I must point out. Um, you know, it's going to a very, very, very good cause and uh, I will link all of that you know, in the description so you can look into it more if you want. And there she is. It's Daisy, who you saw briefly last week. She's decided she wants to be in the video again. So you've got a massive close-up of her then. Yes, she's been quite naughty next to me at the moment. She's become um, almost like my shadow. She follows me around everywhere, um, probably because I'm at home in the day. Um, but, uh, yeah, she seems to have really latched onto me. I'm not sure if we're going to get this all in, um, in shot. I might have to move it a bit. I'll do my best um, because it is a really wide book, as you can probably see. So I'll do my best. I'll do my best. So there we go. There's the uh, usual intro, intro content. It tells you what it's all about. So there, there, we've got some genuine uh, loading, really good loading screens from games that a lot of you might remember. Like, for example, Batman, which is one of the ones often brought up as one of the best loading screens on the Spectrum R-Type as well there. So a little bit about him. In fact, he was Spectrum and then um, uh, Amiga. That was a lovely picture he did. Um, was, that was an original work of just a snowy lodge in the winter. Beautiful. He really knows how to get his way around the, the Spectrum's, you know, attribute clash problems. And there's some Amiga artwork as well that he's done. 
he's also done some stuff for the spectrum next as well so there are it's not all um original spectrum stuff there is stuff i mean that's as amiga uh, that's amiga obviously as well there let's see and then those zx days by sean mcclure when he was putting this book together i recommended he speak to sean mcclure because as far as i'm aware sean mcclure is the most prolific artist of loading screens on the spectrum i think he has more credits to his name for spectrum loading screens than anyone else um correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure i'm right and he's a good friend of mine, absolutely cracking bloke. And I put him and Andy in touch because I said to Andy, why not get somebody who did loading screens back in the day into your book as well? Because it adds some extra value. And Sean's been um, great helping lots of different people out. He's helped me out numerous times. And also, Paul, it, uh, Sean does his own books. So cheap plug there for, for Sean's brilliant books. He did a, a wonderful autobiography called Video Game Development, The Rock and Roll Years, which I highly recommend. Uh, one of the best books I've read in years, and his guides to ZX Spectrum games, which go through uh, yearly periods there and there as well. I did the um, the forward for um, one of his books as well, which was a real honour um, when he asked me to do that. And so this is some of the stuff that, that Sean did. So great screen there for CJ in the USA. It looks fantastic, that does. His St. Dragon screen, which I think he often quotes as being his favourite one that he did, and it is absolutely terrific how he got around the attribute crash and stuff there really capture the feel of the arcade game and he did the graphics of rodland there as well the in-game graphics so there we go and then we go to the screens that wasn't so then we go start looking at some of the the art that he did i, I actually don't want to show you too much fix i don't want to ruin the book so great one there for pac-man using the art from the atari 2600 version with a lot of these what he has done is He's either tried to recreate the loading screens using the cover art for the game uh, or, you know, some other art that he's found related to that game. So obviously he didn't use a Spectrum cover art in this case with Pac-Man. He used the, the 2600 cover art, which is pretty iconic, which is a cool idea. So, oh God, I've skipped too much. So I don't want to ruin this book, so I don't want to show you too much of it. Airborne Ranger, Birds and the Bees. Let's skip quite ahead there. Quasitron, Dictator, Alfida's own pet. It's great that one. Lovely one for Minder there with his, his classic Jag in the background there. Brilliant. Feud, game that a lot of people love. Heavy on the magic, and there he's actually got um, a, an Amstrad CPC version as well, which is pretty cool. So you can compare the two. That's really awesome that he did that there. That's the Super Frog, Circus Charlie, Chaos Engine. So Generation Homebrew. So he's uh, also done some artwork for um, homebrew games that have come out. A lot, obviously, since he started doing these, a lot of homebrew artists have said, wow, these are awesome. Can you make a loading screen for my game? So these are some for some uh, homebrew games and stuff as well that have come out, which is th I thought was, you know, that was really cool to have that in there as well. Shows what a you know, great part of the community he's been. There we go. There's another one where he's done Amsterdam Spectrum. Oh, good. So, and Monty Mole games. So, what's this section is uh, stuff for Crash, Crash Smashers. Yeah, good. So it's like my, my little kitten's just trying to absolutely destroy the house behind me. So she's making as much noise as possible. More games there. A lot of these, uh, these are for Ian Livingston books by the looks of things. Which is quite cool as well. Italian job. So he went about doing something for that. So not all of these are games that were on the spectrum. Some of it is just that he, he wanted to do stuff. Uh, Laurel and Hardy there for example is another one. We've got um, Tower Bridge. So as you can see, all his artwork, he's just absolutely fantastic. Um, and he's done a list of credits there as well, of um, who did the games, who did original art and stuff like that as well. Um, and that was the one he actually did. I think I said about Spectrum Next. Um, so that was a, a Toki screen he did using the Spectrum Next palette, uh, which is pretty cool again. So there we go. I don't want to show the whole book, as I said, because I don't want to completely ruin it. For those who might want to buy it, but if you love pixel art, then like this book is just an essential, basically. I think it's absolutely stunning. It really is so good. Uh, I can't 
find any faults with it this book at all because it's just so beautiful some of the art is absolutely incredible and it's amazing that somebody has that much dedication you know to sometimes spending literally whole days putting these pictures together you know plotting each screen pixel by pixel um and it's just incredible and it blows me away i mean i was a keen artist at school and i remember doing a bit of art on computers and i did quite a lot on um uh neochrome um and hyperpaint on the st back in the day i still got discs and discs of artwork that i did but um i just wouldn't have the patience and dedication these days to to do what andy does um you know what he has done in this book so you know bravo andy and and what a great job you've done and as i say if you're into pixel art especially if you are a fan of the um spectrum then i'd say that this is a book that should definitely be under your christmas tree this year because it's it's absolutely stunning i will stick some links um down below uh to where you can buy it if you haven't already and uh as I say, all the profits go to a great cause, so I suggest you go and get yourself a copy right now. And uh, I thank you for watching my review of um, Better Late Than Never, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.